variation of biodiversity. Biodiversity, as you read earlier, variety of plants and animals and microorganisms living in an area. So, preserve the variety of organisms living in an area, there is a biosphere reserve. So, what is the purpose of constructing a biosphere reserve? To maintain biodiversity, to maintain the variety of living organisms in the earth. There is definitely necessity for different types of organisms, animals to live in the earth and to maintain the culture of that area. So, biosphere reserves are the constructed for the sole purpose of maintaining the biodiversity and culture of that area. Biodiversity is nothing but the variety of plants, animals and microorganisms living in that area. So, what are biosphere reserves? They are protected areas for meant for the living of plants, animals and microorganisms. So, coming to biosphere reserve. Example of biosphere reserve is Pachmari Biosphere Reserve. It is located in Madhya Pradesh. Then Pachmari Biosphere Reserve again contains one national park and two wildlife sanctuaries. Earlier we read know what is natural park and what is sanctuary. So it contains one national park and two wildlife sanctuaries. So the name of the national park is Satpura National Park. And the name of the wildlife sanctuaries is Gori and Pachmari. In your schools maybe while on excursion you might have visited some national parks or wildlife sanctuaries. And there you might have learned about different types of animals in a park or a sanctuary or a biosphere reserve. So this is all about biosphere reserve. Now let's move to the next topic, flora and fauna. Flora and fauna. So you know forests are regarded as the green wealth of the nation. Because they are green in color, there are many benefits of forests. Forests are known as green wealth of this nation. Then some animals and plants belong to one particular area. So those animals and plants found in that particular area are called flora and fauna. Plants are referred as flora and animals are referred as fauna. So examples, Pachmari Biosphere Reserve. We have discussed earlier also. Pachmari Biosphere Reserve is an area allotted by the government for the preservation of flora and fauna. So in this Pachmari Biosphere Reserve, what flora and fauna are prevented? The examples of flora are sal, teak, silver fawn and jamun trees. And examples of fauna or animals conserved in this Pachmari Biosphere Reserve are leopard, chinkara, lulu and wolf. So this is about flora and fauna. These are the areas, some animals and plants are belonging to that particular area. So animals belonging to that particular area are called flora and fauna. So in the examples that told you in Pachmari Biosphere Reserve, what flora and what and fauna or animals are being conserved. So let's move to the next topic. So the next topic we are going to deal is about endemic species. So what do you understand by the term species? Species is nothing but a group of population capable of interbreeding. So a group of an animal capable of interbreeding, mating with each other and producing new offspring or new babies of them. So what is an endemic species? So endemic species is a group of animals and plants found in a particular area. Suppose if there is any biosphere or a sanctuary or a park, a, group, a specific group of plants and animals which are found only in that area. They will not be found in any other area. So forests also have deeper areas and the starting areas. So mainly wild animals you see are in the deeper areas. So let's talk about the taking the example of Pachmari Biosphere Reserve. So what are the species that are found exclusively only in that Pachmari Biosphere Reserve? So what are the endemic species, the special species which are found only in that particular area? So the example will be in flora or plants you have the example is wild mango tree. And then the animals or fauna it is giant squirrel which is found only in the Pachmari Biosphere area. It is not found in any other parts of the India. So, suppose if we introduce new species of animals in these two places, in this particular place, then they will feel discomfort and their life will be in danger and their existence come into end danger. That means there will be chance that they will die because they are adapted to live in that specific area. That group of plants and animals are adapted to live only in that area. Suppose if you introduce plants and animals to that area, then there will be disturbance to their life or habitat and there may be chances that they may even die. So, so coming to wildlife sanctuaries, as you know wildlife sanctuaries protect 
They are an area which protect the wild animals and only wild animals live in sanctuaries and then poaching or killing of the animals in these sanctuaries is not allowed and as we see nowadays if we go to zoos even camera photos are taking the pictures of those animals are not allowed so wildlife sanctuary is an area where there will be very big land so unique landscapes full of trees, plants, full of river water, full of forest bushlands and deltas of rivers so sanctuaries is usually a big area land where you would have unique landscapes, forests and you would have deltas of rivers over there. So coming to national parks, then national parks when compared to sanctuary it is an only area where only wild animals are protected whereas national parks, national parks are protects the whole ecosystem, part of the ecosystem. What is an ecosystem? Ecosystem is an area where total living and the non-living organisms live together. So national park protects the whole ecosystem. Ecosystem is where plants, animals, microorganisms live along with the non-living things like climatic conditions and everything. All this together constitute ecosystem. So wildlife sanctuary is an area where only wild animals are preserved from conserving. They are conserved from getting extinct. When national park, national park is a very large area where both plants, animals, microorganisms and non-living things are also maintained. So, in these national parks, taking the example of Satpura National Park, some animals are getting threatened. What are the examples of threatened animals? Threatened animals means they face a danger of getting extinct. That means the quantity is getting less day by day and maybe in near future they will go extinct. That means they will be no, no longer available or they will die. So what are the examples of threatened animals? Buck, it's a red buck or a blue buck is an animal, elephant, python, rhinoceros, pink head duck and karyal. These are the examples from which in Satpura National Park, these animals are in the face of getting threatened or extinct. They are the threatened animals. So, one more thing what is there in the National Park is the project tiger. So if you know, nowadays you see everywhere, save tiger campaign. Because tigers are getting extinct, their number is getting slow. So the project tiger is designed in such a way that the number of tigers will remain, be protected from getting extinct. So that means tiger is an endangered species, endangered or threatened species. Endangered species is ready to go extinct. That means the species will no longer exist. They will eventually die. So in this ecosystem, ecosystem is total environment where plants, animals, microorganisms along with the non-living things live together that is national park. It is a large area and then in national park there are many endangered animals and threatened species. So some examples of endangered animals are tiger and other than tiger they also have buffaloes, cows and taking one more example, suppose in our houses we get cats, dogs, lizards, frogs. Sometimes if we don't like these animals, we go and kill them. Owls, bats, we go and harm them, try to kill them. So what happens? They again pose a risk for danger. That means the species go and go extinct. So we should never kill the animals. Survival of every organism is equally important in this world. They may definitely have some use for the environment because one animal may eat another animal. Taking the example of food chains or food webs. So in the food chains or food webs, which you have studied in the earlier classes, you know indirectly or directly, every organism depends on each other for the food purpose. The basic producers are always plants. The first level or the basic level are always herbivores are always plants. The basic producers are plants. After plants, the primary, secondary and tertiary levels are always animals or human beings. So indirectly, all the animals are important and they depend on each other for their food purpose. So suppose if you kill the frogs, dogs, lizards which come around your house, cats, then they pose a threat, they will become endangered. So you should not kill the organisms. Survival of every organism is equally important. Even though tigers are preserved in parks, they are they pose a threat. That means they are ready to get extinct. That's why government has launched a project called Project Tiger, in which tigers are being protected and safeguarded. Then there is something called Red Data Book described by the government. What is Red Data Book? Red Data Book maintains a list of these endangered animals. There is separate list for both plants and 
animals. There are separate books for plants and separate book for animals. So red data book keeps a list, keeps a record of the endangered or threatened species, both plants and animals. Next topic comes migration. So as we are talking about plants and animals, plants do not move from place to place, right? They are fixed at one place. Whereas animals may move from one to one place. So birds fly away to a particular area at a particular time because of climatic changes. You know no, some birds due to the climatic changes like extreme hot or extreme cold weather conditions, they move, move from a particular place to another place at a particular time, fixed time of the year when the climate goes either too hot or either too cold, too cold. So this process of changing from place to place for the purpose of food or shelter is called migration. So what is the purpose of migration? Sometimes animals or birds move to lay eggs or otherwise for food purpose or shelter purpose. Generally migration is done only by birds. Animals very rarely migrate. So birds cover miles and miles. They move from continent to continent for the purpose of laying eggs, food and shelter. So they cover long distances to reach the other land. So ever imagine moving from continent. Sometimes migratory birds come from Australia to India for the purpose of food. When there is extreme cold, extreme cold or extreme snowfall in Australia, they cannot survive, they can not get their food. So that time they migrate to India. So sometimes around your houses, in the trees also sometimes in some parts of the year you see very colorful, different shape of birds. So these are all migratory birds. So sometimes if you go to some ponds or lakes around your places, you sit and observe for some time. So in the suppose if you are going to a beach. So the first, if you see at the corners of the beach, you see some plant, birds of different types. Or suppose if you go to a lake, suppose if there are trees around the lake, you see different colors of different shapes of birds. All these are migratory birds. They move for the purpose of food or shelter or to lay eggs to different areas. Maybe from continent to continent also many birds move. So paper, coming to paper, how is paper made? Paper is made from plants, everybody is aware of that. And nowadays we talk a lot about recycled paper, recycled paper. So paper, you know, it takes 17 trees to make one ton of paper. When we talk about ton, it means 100 kg, you know it, right? So it takes 17 trees to make one ton of paper. So one paper can be recycled only up to six times. So what the government advises you is try to save paper. So if each of the student of you saves at least one paper, then we can save many trees. So think about recycling of the papers. So if you have you ever thought if there are no trees, how can we make paper? It will be very difficult, right? So the purpose of trees is very important. So you must never cut trees. And nowadays recently a Harita Haram program was launched by the government of Telangana, Asia. It was like Every person should plant trees. So, have you ever undertaken any process of planting trees? Earlier, everybody, when we were used to be in school, there used to be a program called planting of trees. So, every student must plant a sapling or a tree in their home or around their houses. That way, we will grow forests and there will be lots of air because plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. So, we will be having less pollution and more of fresh air because reforestation. So you have we have talked about deforestation. Deforestation is nothing but cutting of the trees. So what is reforestation? Restocking of the destroyed forest. So we are cutting for we what we read in the deforestation, we cut forest for procuring land for cultivation, for construction of houses or factories and for wood purpose. So this is the opposite of deforestation, that is reforestation, restocking of the desired forest. So what is the goal of reforestation? To plant as many trees as we are cutting. Understood? To plant as many trees as they are cutting. How many? Suppose if 10 trees are cut. Our goal is to replant those 10 trees. So sometimes for reforestation occurs naturally. Maybe due to seeds falling on that. Or maybe due to pollinating agents like air, water, insects. They come through the air. They get deposited. Then rainfall comes. Then again they germinate. So these are the techniques by which natural reforestation occurs. So our goal is to retain the green wealth of the nation. So as I told you, forests are the green wealth of the nation. Our goal is to retain the green wealth of the nation. So government has formulated a specific method, some specific rules. That is called Forest Conservation Act. So there are some specific rules under that. So have you heard that what is the permanent solution to deforestation? Just think of it. So so what is the summary of this lesson? You 
have understood what is what is forest, what are flora and fauna, what are endangered species, what are mean by threatened species, what do you mean by endemic species, what are the flora and fauna, what do you mean by sanctuary, uh, wild, wildlife sanctuary, national park or a biosphere reserves, why government has constructed all these reserves, why we are conserving plants and animals and what is the purpose of migration what is the purpose of paper, what is the need for recycling. So all this you have to come to know. So now almost at least make a goal that you